cool. Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Okay, so is omega-3 EPA actually better in the bloodstream than DHA? Well, this amazing study just came out in April of 2023 that really points something out that I think we should really pay attention to. Okay, so where did all this come from? Well, I was hearing from several of the plant-based doctors that, hey, wait a minute, when you do blood uh, tests, and at least there is plasma blood tests, but there's also what's called red blood cell tests. So they're actually measuring how much actually gets into the red blood cells of omega-3. Now, what happens, what they found was that when you consume uh, DHA as a supplement, like from algae or for fish oil, the red blood cells increase the level of DHA. Okay, great. So the red blood cells are taking up the DHA from the plasma. That makes sense. But what they found was that when you took ALA, which is found in plants, that the DHA levels in red blood cells actually went down. Now, at first they thought this was pretty alarming and they thought, oh, this is an incidence of why ALA doesn't convert to DHA because they were looking in the bloodstream. We now know that this is really not the best place to look for where the conversion, because this isn't, the conversion of ALA to DHA is not happening in the blood, it's happening in the tissues. Okay, but why then would uh, the more ALA you consume, the less DHA would be found in blood. Well, I think this study, this new study on EPA, really sheds some significant light on the reasoning for this. Okay, let's dive into the study. Okay, so the study uh, basically title is, let's go ahead and put it up on the screen for you. I put it in the comments section, but for those of you watching, right here in the uh, screen. ALA increases LDL. The be Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I gave you a little peek uh, at what some of the <laughs> issues were. All right, so this is the study. Um, let me fix my screen. There we go. Um, the effect of omega-3 polyunsaturated fat fatty acids are proof is on cardiovascular outcomes in patients with diabetes. Now, this is a meta-analysis, um, which is really important uh, because it is inclusive of eight studies. So this is not a cherry pick study. This is a meta-analysis review of eight different studies that included uh, almost 58,000 patients. It's quite a good number of patients, eight studies, meta-analysis. So this is not a single one-off study, a cherry pick study or anything like that. This is actually looking at a lot of different studies and asking the question, what happens when you take EPA by itself? And what happens when you take EPA and DHA? Are there different outcomes on cardiovascular disease? Now, this was a pretty resounding yes, very different incomes, but it, outcomes rather, but I think the outcomes would really surprise a lot of people. So they looked at, okay, what if you take just EPA? And what if you take EPA with DHA? What are the outcomes on that? Look, remember, looking at eight different studies, 50, almost 58,000 patients. And this is what they found. And I'll quote it directly from the study. Among them, EPA, but not EPA plus DHA, significantly reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes. Let me just summarize that for you. So EPA reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes, but when you added DHA, you did not get any decrease in the risk of cardiovascular disease. 
what? <laughs> That's right. So this may give us a clue of why the body has a preference to keep ALA and EPA in red blood cells. Because the body uses ALA and EPA to reduce the risk of heart disease. Makes sense, it's in the blood, right? So what they're saying in this is that if you add DHA, it wipes out the benefits of the EPA. Now that's no bueno, that's not good. So why is that? So I'll go ahead and quote one more quote from this study, EPA alone, significantly reduced risk of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes. Whereas the combination of EPA and DHA was not significantly associated with it. Now that's a direct quote from the study, good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right on the, on the screen in the comments section because it, I feel it's that important put it in the comment section here. I'm going to go ahead and post that up on the screen so that you can see that because this is really, really important. Why did we figure this out <laughs> in April of 2023? So why is that? Well, let's, let's take it to some of the reasons that are elucidated in the study. Now, there are four different uh, aspects that I've summarized from the study. Now, you can Read the study yourself and you can pull out these, these contexts. Number one, DHA increases LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. EPA does just the opposite, according to the study. It decreases LDL cholesterol. EPA and statins improved endothelial function. Endothelial is the lining of your arteries. So it improved function at the endothelial function. DHA did not. So number four, EPA protects against atherosclerosis, the number one cause of disease death, cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease. DHA does not. So you've got four different instances where DHA is actually making it worse by increasing LDL cholesterol, does not help um, uh, with uh, endothelial function, and does not protect against um, uh, HDL oxidation. So oxidation happens when you oxidize cholesterol, it gets really fluffy and sticky, and that's what can cause the beginnings of placking in the arteries or atherosclerosis. DHA does not protect against this, where EPA does. EPA decreases cholesterol. EPA improves endothelial function, the function inside the, uh, the cells of the walls of the artery, and it prevents against oxidation. DHA does not. This is why we're seeing that when you give people just EPA, they get improved cardiovascular disease. Let's, let's actually take another look at another study. This one came out just last year. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. This is a 2022 study that showed plant-based omega-3s, which is ALA, may boost heart health and reduce risk of heart disease. So this was last year and they came up with the same concept. So what did they, what did they find? Well, let's, let's quote from that study. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, uh, it's a little bit long, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this quote direct from the study up in the comment section too as well, because it's really important. Okay, when people with low levels of omega-3 in their diet ate ALA, they saw benefit in cardiovascular health. Awesome. But here's the interesting part of the study. When people with high levels of omega-3s from other sources like fish or algae, so it's already high in preformed EPA and DHA, when they ate more ALA, they also saw a benefit. So, 
a quote from the study, it could be that ALA works synergistically with other omega-3s. Remember, if you're taking just, let me, uh, let me go ahead and hide this just a second. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put up the, uh, the conversion chart here. If you are taking EPA, that's uh, right here. Okay. If you're taking just preformed EPA, and DHA down here at the bottom, remember this is a unidirectional, so it converts all the way down here. If you're taking EPA or DHA as a supplement, you're not getting any of these first three, ALA, SDA, or ETA. ALA can convert down to all of them. DHA converts to nothing but DHA, that's it. So taking DHA is actually technically probably the least important thing to do here. And as a matter of fact, by these two studies, it shows that ALA is probably even more important. ALA and especially SDA converts to a high level. Okay, why is that? Because SDA is one step closer here. This is SDA converts to ETA and then EPA. Now, if you have a high levels of SDA in the plant-based uh, supplement or food, there is a much higher conversion, three to four times the amount of conversion to EPA. Remember, EPA is the heart healthy one that is being pointed out in these two studies. So what's the richest source of SDA on the planet? Well, it's this guy right here. This is a field of ahi flower. Ahi flower is the richest non-GMO plant source of SDA on the planet. Now, why is SDA so important? Let's go back to the chart here because SDA skips. So there's a there's an enzyme right here. It's called 6-delta desaturase. And some people have a little bit of trouble producing that enzyme. So if you skip over that process and get to SDA, then those people who have a little bit lower production of that 6-delta saturase, it's called a rate limiting enzyme. If they have a little bit lower production of that, no worries, a higher SDA amount will actually convert to EPA three to four times. And this is what we saw when we went head to head with ahi flower and flax. This, the top line on all four of these quadrants is ahi flower. The bottom line is flax and it's the conversion to EPA. So you can see in as little as two weeks, you have a significant difference. And by four weeks, it's a very significant difference of the amount of conversion to EPA over flax. And this is why this could be a lot better for people, both with a low rate limiting enzyme production. So it adds to that problem. That means almost anybody can take ahi flour and get good results with it, where flax, which has zero SDA in it at all, won't may not be the right fit for people who have that uh, rate limiting six uh, delta desaturase enzyme. If they're poor in production of that, if you have a genetic uh, difference that uh, doesn't produce that as well, or you have an injury or some other thing that, that prevents you from producing that enzyme well enough, you're not going to get that from flax. So that can be a challenge. Now, as you can see in this chart, that uh, ahi flower is the richest source of omega-3 and 6, the essential omegas. And it's the highest of any non-GMO plant in SDA. So you don't have to worry about that rate limiting enzyme if you're too low in it. I flower is the perfect fit for everyone. So this is great. We know that SDA actually converts at a three to four times higher rate than ALA does. And ahi flower is the richest source of SDA of any non-GMO plant ever discovered. So it gives you all the ALA that you need, gives you all the SDA you need, in, just in case you have a rate limiting uh, issue, and it will convert down to DHA. Now check out my other studies on uh, my other videos, rather, elucidating the studies that show through carbon isotope we know for a fact now that the body converts all of the ALA to DHA that it needs for its own purposes. It just doesn't do this in the bloodstream. 
we've been using blood tests as a marker for DHA and it's wrong. It's giving us the wrong information. As a matter of fact, the more ALA or EPA you put in, the more the body actually kicks DHA out of the cells because it's not good for it. DHA increases LDL. Uh, EPA decreases LDL. So that's a, a better thing. EPA and statins improved uh, endothelial function. DHA did not. EPA can protect against uh, the oxidation of HDL. DHA does not. You see how much better EPA is than DHA for being in the blood to protect the heart, to protect the arteries. This is why when you consume a lot of ALA, you'll actually see the body eliminate the DHA because it's inferior to ALA and EPA in the blood. It's not that your body is not converting it. The conversion takes place in the tissues and the body ends up storing massive amounts. We found that the body can store up to 50 grams that's 50,000 milligrams of DHA stored in body tissues, body fat, and the brain and, and liver. So when the body is storing all this, how much is being used by the brain on a daily basis? About two to three and a half milligrams. 50,000 milligrams of DHA stored in the body, two to three and a half milligrams needed by the brain per day. Do you see we have way much more than we need? So what the study on uh, DHA found that when the body starts converting ALA to DHA, it is just to top off the stores. And if it's not needed, the body immediately starts to burn off this and just use DHA for calories. Simply just burn it up as calories, just like any other fat. It's not even using it because we store so much. So this is a quite a different story. And what we've been doing is looking in the blood and saying, oh, there's not enough ALA conversion. That's not true. And we know that's not true now. And then we saw, hey, wait a minute, the more ALA we take, the lower the DHA is in the red blood cells. Well, good. That's exactly what the body should be doing, kicking out that <laughs> inferior DHA and replacing it with EPA and ALA especially ALA can convert to, to EPA very easily and SDA can convert to, to EPA even better, which is why ahi flour is really the king of the choices. So you get that high conversion of SDA to EPA four times more than flax, chia or hemp. Uh, hemp has a little bit of SDA, but ahi flour has 10 times the amount of SDA than hemp does. So hemp is better than flax and then ahi flour 10 times better in SDA and higher in total uh, essential fatty acids too as well. This is why it won the next award. That's right. The next award, the top supplement award in the United States given out to the best ingredient. Ahi flour won that best ingredient because it's exactly what the body needs high amounts of SDA, high amounts of ALA, high amounts of uh, omega-3 and 6 to give your body what it needs in single serving dosages so that you can make sure that you've got your omegas covered. The study